Hey homies, it's your girl Ronika. Please do tell podcast. So happy that you're back with us for another episode of Storytime. Now you all know if you're new here, I try to do some updates at the very beginning. So when I get into story time, it's just flowing. Okay, so first of all, we're still in March, which is Women's History Month. And it's also Sisterhood Month for Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. And so I'm going to share some stories, of course, about sisterhood over the course of our time together. But before we get into that, I have a really big announcement. Are you ready? As of this Monday, this past Monday, so what was that, March 11th, 2024, I, Ronika J. Williams, am no longer on high blood pressure medication. Yes, so I I even, before I knew that there was going to be a celebration for this, I got this really cool tambourine, which I'll tell you the story about the tambourine in a second. But I felt like in order to share with my homies that I do have a new tambourine, I should share that update with you. I went to the doctor on Monday for my annual checkup, and I got my blood work done. So, okay, let's just do some mini stories before we get into the big story time. Friday, March 8th, after I came back from the story time that I'm, the the big story time that I'm going to uh, talk about later on, I pull into the soul food. Now, my doctor told me to stop frequenting the soul food restaurant. Okay, yeah, I I wasn't going to get any food. I was going to get cake. About 15 minutes before my blood work, um, before my blood work, why is my sister, she's going to hear, she's going to, and I'm on do not disturb. She's going to, that means she kept calling to get through. I'm going to get her. Any hoot. <laughs> lie, just lie. Okay. I say, you know, I'm going to stop in, get a slice of cake for after my blood work um, appointment. Knowing I'm not supposed to be spending money, extra money or anything like that whatsoever. So I pull in to Diallo's, because yes, I'm going to say the name, because once I finish with this part of the story, I am going to have a talk with the owner, okay? I pull in. They have, like, the best lemon pound cake, and I haven't had any all year. I pull in. My favorite lady comes out, Miss Hope, and I said, please tell me that you have the lemon pound cake she says we're no longer serving the lemon pound cake or the caramel cake and this is exactly how I looked at her she had a mask on and I and I have this thing where I do read lips I can hear you but I still want to read your lips to make sure that I'm processing what you're saying so it was really hard for me to understand what she was saying to me in that moment I said like not ever again and she said oh the owner he said that he won't be making the cakes anymore like this month like I I'm just are you talking about forever or is it just by special request you're not selling about a slice do you have to buy a cake now and I told her in that moment that I was going to leave at that moment in my feelings I'd be back not that day but I'll be back eventually but clearly I'm not coming back for cake I get in my car I pull off and I get on the highway to head to um cops as they call it to get my blood work done and I just said my guy you have such a sense of humor first of all I wasn't supposed to be there second of all who goes to get cake before getting blood work done because I was gonna you know say oh after my blood work let's have dessert that's not what happened 
So I um I head on to the cops and I and I get my blood work done and then goodness, I think my appointment was maybe at four fifteen. I start my results start rolling in around five thirty, six PM Eastern Standard Time. And at first I'm like, Ooh we improvement, improvement, A, A, yeah, great. By 6 o'clock, that high went to, like, a low because I was looking at the other, my because it was coming in in stages. And I just thought to myself, what the heck do I have to do? Because it's saying my cholesterol is really high. So another thing that I should not have been in the soul food restaurant. Got it. Okay, I got it. Lord, I got it. I go into my doctor's appointment on Monday. So I'm, I'm going to tell you that Friday, that sit, that's, it totally spit me that I went to sleep at 7 p.m. Because I was, I felt defeated. I, I absolutely felt defeated. I go into the doctor's office Monday. They, they do the, first of all, I was excited. I didn't even take off all of my clothing that I usually do when I'm about to step on the scale. I was like, Shh, I'm going to leave. I'm going to just take my shoes off. My sweater is going to stay on because I know I didn't lost weight. She's going to be happy that I even lost weight. So I stepped on that scale with confidence. And then I go in, I get my blood work done. I was like, not my blood work, my, my blood pressure. And I was like, man, that looks really good. Maybe a little low, but it looks really good. And I go in and I'm talking to my doctor and it's like a, an absolute therapy session. She was asking me what's happened over the last year. What were some things that had changed? And I told her, I said, you know, I just eliminated a lot of the things that was bringing me a whole lot of stress. I have returned back to the love of being on this podcast and I've been active more. I've really been showing up for myself and I said, I've been really, honestly, I've been declining the happy hours because, listen, anybody that'd be like, oh, let's get dinner or let's go to happy hour. I was all in because we were really trauma bonding over what we were going through. And it was so unhealthy that I got to the point, especially in August, the last time I talked to my doctor, when we had a telehealth appointment, she told me that the things that I was doing as far as work, and even the, the the food that I was consuming was killing me. That's all I needed to hear. And I remember I was in New York. I think I told you all this story. I was in New York when she told me this. So I had to come out of the guest bedroom of my best friend's house and just save face of what I just heard. Like, okay, I, so I got to watch what I'm eating on this trip. <laughs> so I, So it was an instant, okay, your lifestyle has to change immediately and that's another thing that I've also observed with doing my family history journey is I'm seeing where heart disease pops up I'm seeing where a lot of the things that I don't need to be doing popped up early in like my dad's siblings or his or his great-grandparents and how I can do things now to make sure that I'm around a whole lot longer and that's a decision that's a conscious decision that I had to make for myself but it was one thing that my doctor said to me that I even shared with uh, my line sister last night is that my doctor was saying that how she used to entertain a lot. She used to entertain at our house. She would have people over. She would always like to have people over until she got to the point of like, man, you know, it's really better to have less people. Like it's just, it's better this way. And she said, just think. When you were going to these happy hours, are these people that you will welcome into your home? She said, just, she said, just think, you know, when you're drinking, you're not in, you're not 100%, you're not in the right state of mind. And are these people that you trust to be around when you're not at 100%? Would you want these same people in your house? I said, oh, mind you, she's doing my whole full body physical and we're having this conversation. I thought, whoa, okay. 
All right. So there was also another reason why I pulled back on these things. Okay. She said, you know, and it's okay to have a glass of wine, you know, here and there. But she said, no, really think about the company that you're keeping. <sighs> but yeah, that's, that's how I arrived at the, um, she said that this was a joy for her to be able to share with me that she can take me off the blood pressure, high blood pressure medication. She gave me three months to lower my cholesterol. So that day I went and got me a steak taco because I said, clearly I'm going to have to pull back from the red meat. <laughs> like that was my last hurrah. Or not last hurrah, but, you know, really pulling back on eating it so much because I love me a steak taco, I'm going to just say. So now that is more of a maybe once a month instead of, trying to make them once a week you know but I left out of that office feeling renewed and I did and my doctor's office is like in the same um the same I wouldn't call it a shopping center but the the same building I'm gonna say the same building as um Lori's place which is the grief counseling center and so I was able to leave out of my doctor's office march down there and celebrate with them like you know what I was I came down here when I told you all when I found out I was being put on high blood pressure medication now I'm able to tell you that I'm coming off and Denise who I shared it with she said, this is even motivation for myself. Like, what? She said, I remember you coming in here feeling defeated and me telling you, like, okay, this is what you can do. This is, And you did it. You did it. So really, whatever you, you're dealing with right now and there's some things that you want to change about yourself, you can do it. You can do it. I, that was the summer of 2022. I didn't get serious until August of last year. And now I'm I'm off of them. So praise God for that. So now my next, as I said, my next step is cholesterol. So you all, when I think of women's history, there's so many stories that we've never heard of. They, there's still some stories that are just unwritten, they're untold. But it's been such an honor to retrace the steps of my grandmother, her mother, my dad. It's been really a beautiful experience. So the weekend of, really, when did I leave? I think I left February 28th. I, my first stop was in Dallas. Um, I went down there to be with my best friend. She had outpatient surgery. And then I left there and went to Little Rock, Arkansas. I think I've been there. <laughs> I don't really remember it. Like the college tour that I went on in high school. It's kind of a blur. I feel like we went to Alabama. I'm not. I feel like we went to Arkansas maybe. But I don't really, really remember that part of the trip. I only remember Alabama because we met Ludacris for the first time. That was pretty cool. But I flew into Little Rock. I get there. It may be 11 o'clock in the morning because they're on Central Standard Time. And I I thought I was going to be able to go straight to the car for, like, saying I was thinking I was preferred for my rental car. Nope. So that was about an hour and a half wait. But while I was waiting in that line, I was able to talk to a gentleman and we got sparked up the conversation about family history and and he's from okay, let me wait. He's from Chicago. His family is from Mississippi, not far from where my my paternal grandfather is from. And we just kind of shared experience of like the, our 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 family's great migration story. And I was asking him, because, you know, I'm, I'm a woman that's usually traveling by herself unless I'm with someone. And I was asking him, like, where do I need to stay away from? Like, I'm, 
I always try to make sure, especially when I go on these ex- excursions, is that I'm on the road back to the hotel or Airbnb or whatever before dusk or before dark. Cause I don't, I don't know the ins and outs of any place, and just for my own safety, that's what I. So I try to start early, get me a good twelve hours in, and then go on back to where I'm, where I'm laying my head safely, with laying my head. I get into Little Rock, and I decide, hey, I'm gonna do all of my Arkansas stops today. Because, mind you, I was only there for, so if I came in, no matter, matter of fact, I came in on March 2nd, which is the my anniversary. So I was the fact that I was doing all of these stops on a day that also marks renewal for me, like, oh, a rebirth for myself, was, I don't know if I can even put it into words. It was, just, it was really just like, I'm I'm still in awe thinking about it. I get on the highway. I said, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the stops where my grandmother was born, where my great-grandmother, um, where she died, where she's buried, where my great-grandfather is buried. I'm going to do all of that <laughs> today. I was like, I'm going to do all that on a Saturday within five. Because now I have, I know I have at least five hours of daylight because we hadn't, you know, we didn't spring forward yet. I pull into, I'm actually going down the back roads of, of Arkansas, I believe it was Highway 165, and I'm sure to send the location to my friends and family where I'm at, but it's also cool to watch when they, when they record my location, you see my little head bopping down the highway, which is really, I I always see that like on Instagram or, or different places that people do that. And to be funny, but now I think it's really fun and funny for me to even see me in my yellow hat bopping down, down, down the freeway. My first stop was Dermot, Arkansas. And I pulled in very small. I think it was about the population might be 2,500 people. So it was definitely smaller. It's about a quarter of the size of, of my hometown of Ben Harbor and I pull in and I always try to make sure I get a picture of the welcome to Dermot sign or welcome to Tiller or welcome to Arkansas sign. Y'all, I pulled in. It's a two lane, <laughs> two lane highway or, or state road. I turn around. I'm parked on the side of the road and I always make sure my hazards are, are on. So people will see that I'm I'm there, like there's someone on the side of the road. I'm taking pictures, and I see, I see this black woman ride by, in a Toyota Camry, and she slows down, and then I see her, turn around in like this dirt patch. And mind you, I'm the Welcome to Derma Arkansas sign is, on the side of railroad tracks, active railroad tracks. And she turns around, then she comes back, and she says, Baby, is everything okay? And I looked at her and I said, Yes, ma'am, I'm fine. I'm just taking pictures. She said, I just wanted to make sure you were okay. I said, I really appreciate that, but yes, I'm fine. And she said, okay. So she goes down a little bit further down the road. She turns around again, and then she goes back in the direction that she was originally um, intending to go. And again, every time that I leave, before I leave in the morning, or just leave to go out on an excursion, I always say, Lord, just send your angels out before me. Just have them encamped around me. And again, another angel showed up to make sure that I was okay. So I get a little bit further down the road and I um I turn, I make a left 
and I'm making my way to the funeral home that is on the death certificate of both my great grandfather and my great grandmother. This funeral home is still in business. No one was there. It almost looked abandoned, but not abandoned. It was def- it just it was as my dad would say, it looked dead. It it just did. It it looked <laughs> he used to make us laugh with that. He said, you know, a funeral home should just, you know, it should look like it's dead people there. It should just be really quiet. It shouldn't be active. It shouldn't be a whole lot going on unless there's a funeral. And that's what it looked like. It was no cars out there. Um, it looked like a small southern funeral home. If that makes any sense, it just, I, yeah, it was, wow, like a small rural, and I always struggle with that, with that word, but I, uh, yeah, it was, so it was surreal to be there taking photos and retracing those steps of family members that were planning those, those funerals even back in the 40s and 50s. And in true uh, small town fashion as it was when I was in Alabama, people were slowing down and and waving. And I said, I just love us. (laughs) I just, I love us. No one, no one stopped to say like, hey, what are you doing or anything? They definitely saw the camera. And of course, you know, if they're, if they go out there and they look and because I'm tagging the places where I'm going or where I've been they'll see that, oh, oh, she's she's doing an actual project. Okay, she's doing a project. I said, okay, well, I'm, now I'm, I'm ready for the next stop. The next stop is where my grandmother was born and also where um, the cemetery is where my, my great-grandparents are buried. Y'all, I... I pull into Tiller. I go over those same railroad tracks that were um, the same ones that were in Dermot. So that train goes straight through both towns. And then the train comes and I'm just stopping and I'm just looking around and I said, oh, my God, like this is where my grandmother's from. This is crazy. Like I've never would have imagined I would be here. On the side, on the right side of me, I think it said the Tiller Town Hall or something like that. And then I'm I'm able to go. Mind you, the railroad there's no arm. Like you just you get the lights. There's no arm for the for the railroad tracks. I said, oh, this is this is different. There's no arm. There's just was there even lights? I got to go back and look at the video. But I just know I just said okay. I guess they just know like hey, you see this train coming, you better get off these tracks. I go over the railroad tracks. I'm going through a developed neighborhood. And then I get to gravel. And I said, oh, dear. Okay. And I see this this church that says um, Loggy Bayou. I think it said Loggy Bayou Baptist Church, where I knew that the, the name of the cemetery is Loggy Bayou Cemetery. So I pull in, I'm looking around, I'm looking for a sign, I'm looking like for a Crystal Springs, welcome to Crystal Springs Cemetery, welcome to North Shore Cemetery, or Memory Gardens, that's what I'm looking for, nothing, nothing, I'm looking around, looking around, I said, man, that cemetery, usually, you know, in the South, as, as I remember, the cemeteries are usually attached to the church or they're they're really close by. I'm still looking around and I see this huge wooded area behind. And when I say it was even more gravel, even more, that I said, um, I probably should not go around here. Like I'm not even finna I'm not even finna chance it. Like that looks that really looks like the bayou back there. It's probably alligator. I was just thinking it's probably alligators and everything back there. Then the spirit said, oh, no, you're going back there. I was I sat in that church parking lot and I said, going back where, Lord? I, 
It doesn't seem safe back there. There's probably nothing back there. I don't need to go. And so, yeah, you're going. It's like literally <laughs> having a conversation with God, like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I start up the car. I go around the bend. And it's for sure by you on, on both sides, uh, on one side. And I said, oh, dear God, it's like probably everything over there. Like every snake imaginable. Like I was going there in my mind. I come around the corner. I look to the right. It's a cemetery. I get out. I start running from tombstone to tombstone. Some of them were very, very old. As I as I said, my great-grandparents, they passed in the 40s and 50s. So it wasn't really that I was hoping that I would see. I, I was hoping that I would be able to identify their gravesite. But I wasn't, that wasn't really my goal then. I was just happy to know that I had found it. I took some pictures out there. The mosquitoes were um, larger than than life t- for me. Um, but I made sure I didn't go into the wooded part of the of the um, of the cemetery when it gets like really wooded because I was like it's probably like wolves and then just coyotes. It's probably a lot a lot out there. So I just kind of ran from tombstone to tombstone and then I got back in the car and I came back out and then as I'm coming back the way that I came I I reached the end of the the dirt road and I look across and it's another cemetery (laughs) so before that my phone was saying SOS I wasn't getting any service out there but when I got over to the cemetery that now is in front of the church, so now there's a cemetery behind the church and there's one in front. I, I reached the one that's in front. I'm able to FaceTime my best friend, Demita, and I said, this is unbelievable. And she said, well, let me see. I said, it's literally, the cemetery was probably the size of the room that I'm in now. It really wasn't that big. So maybe, I'm going to guess maybe 20 tombstones out there. And some of them were very old, like the etching was gone. You couldn't read it at all. And here here goes Demita. So what about the funeral home that your great-grandparents, you know, since it's still in business, would they be able to tell you plot information? I said, the one that I just went to that looked absolutely dead, probably not. Um, and I said, that's, I've, I've called them in the past, and I think they only deal on, you know, just you just calling to make arrangements or you're calling to pick up a body. Like I feel like that's a, that's a situation where it's somebody's home phone and you only call for that purpose only. Like I don't know if they have archives because they've never answered for me. And she was like, well, that's just worth researching again. I said, Okay. All right. You're right. You're right. You're right. And she said, I'm sure this is things that you've thought of, but it's just worth trying it again. But to be, I was really, I stood out there. So after I hung up with her, I stood out there and I, I looked around and I said, they made the trip from Dermot Arkansas which is only I think maybe it might be 10 minutes apart but they made the the trip from that funeral home to this place and I thought maybe this is the family church but I was literally retracing the steps like I could envision like almost like a a color purple scene like the the antique cars from back then and them riding down in a funeral processional to it I had all of those thoughts I get back on the highway or on on this um 
on this same road. I pull over again because I see a sign that says Tiller this way, Dermot this way. And again, I'm on the side of the road. Hazards on. It's 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 dusk at this point, or it's it's the sun is going down. She's I should say. And this big like Dodge Ram truck. It sounds like it's a Hemi. It's um a white couple pulls up behind me and asked me if I needed any help. I said, no, I'm, I'm good. Thank, but thank you for stopping. And they, um, they gave me the thumbs up in a wave reverse and went on back down, down that, down that state road. And again, an angel, every time I stop, Every time I stop. So you got to think there was an angel that that met me when I was coming in. And there was one when I was leaving the area to go back to Little Rock because that's where I was staying for that weekend. And I was and there was one sign that just kept it was almost like a pick me up every time I saw it. It said Delta Rhythm and Bayou Highway. And there's a few people that have been following the project, like PJ, who I've I've grown, I've known him all my life. Um, his grandparents lived across the street from me growing up. And another gentleman named Brandon, who I met when he was working for Cornerstone locally, but he's from Arkansas. And he was saying, man, I've really been enjoying your, your story times because, you know, with the 29 days of stories in February, he said, man, I've just really been enjoying them. And I said, well, I was in your neck of the woods and I today and I was in Dermot and I was in Taylor. He was like, oh, you were down in the Delta. I said, yeah, I guess, yeah, I was down in the Delta. And I said, but it was just that sign of Delta Rhythm and Bayou. Not Rhythm and Blues, but Rhythm and Bayou. Like, it was almost like a a soft R&B blues beat that was reminding me, like, wow, you are, you are really doing the work. <sighs> so I ride back to my hotel and, um, try to get some rest, but I'm so excited. I hurry up and downloaded all the photos and videos that I took that day. And all I could say was, thank God. Because there were so many moments when I just felt like, oh, I don't have the money to do this. I don't have a team to go out there with me to do it. But God has blessed me to be able to do a lot of this stuff by myself, to experience it by myself, and to share it with you all. And also encourage you to... um collect those stories and do the work for yourself, especially when it comes to your family story. So I don't want to give you all of that story time in this particular episode because there is a part two. So I'm going to come back for part two, but I'm going to conclude this episode here of the podcast. And then you're going to have to come back for the next installment for the next episode and hear how the rest of my trip went because it's really going to it might blow your mind so i am your homegirl ronika this is the please to tell podcast we are all about story time around these parts and we will see you soon